Imagine the following situation. The shooting day is over and you're offloading footage to a single location. The next day you arrive at the office and two or more editors are working on that footage on different machines even though no one has copied that footage anywhere else. More than that, all clips have proxies generated even though no one has transcoded the footage. And it's all already uploaded to the cloud. Hey, it's Piotr and today we're gonna talk about Evo Shared Storage, which is all-in-one solution to manage assets across multiple editing machines. If you're a solo freelancer, then probably it's a redundant piece of gear for you. But if you work in a team or hire editors, a shared storage server like Evo will without a doubt change your life for the better. It provides you with reliability, an asset management solution, a way of sharing projects and an easy to use remote editing system. Evo is used by the broadcast industry, post-production houses, companies like Masterclass, you name it. By the way, this video is sponsored by Studio Network Solutions, but I have complete freedom over what I say here and they will watch it for the first time alongside you once it's published. I am using Evo Prodigy, which is the starting point in the Evo family. Designed for smaller teams in a format of a standalone box instead of a rack mounted piece of gear. Evo Prodigy has 1 gigabits per second ports, but you can also extend it to 10 gigabits per second. It has 4 HDD base and you can also get an SSD equivalent. My entry model has 8 terabytes of storage, but you can scale Prodigy up to 48 terabytes. If you need more space, however, rack mounted solutions can be scaled up to multiple petabytes of data, meaning that Evo can be used by the biggest production houses out there. You can set drives to work in any RAID configuration, like RAID 0, 1, 5, 6 or 10. I've set my Prodigy to RAID 5, which gives me some redundancy with available space of free drives. In other words, the fourth drive is used to preserve data that could be potentially lost if any of the four drives would be damaged. For a better explanation of how different RAID configuration work than I could ever give, check out the links in the description or a card somewhere over here. Evo can be used both as NAS or SUN. In the description I will also link a video that explains the difference between the two, but generally we are interested in a network attached storage that is NAS. You can notice that Prodigy is much bigger than an enclosure for four drives. That's because it's a server. It's not a combined HDD like for example too big from Lacey. Evo has its own RAM, processing unit, power supply and so on. Because of that, it's an independent unit and all internal calculations, like for example, transcoding clips to proxies are performed using its own computing power. But hardware is just the first component you get with Prodigy and other EVO systems. To be honest, the price you pay for Prodigy would be too high if you wouldn't get more. So what else is included? I'll just name a few things that are the most important. First, we get Share Browser, which is a media asset management app that can be also accessed and managed from the web. You actually get unlimited copies of that software. You get Slingshot, which is basically an API that adds automation features to your Evo. You get Nomad, which lets you edit with automatically generated proxies and easily swap them later for rendering on a different machine that has access to the original media. You get web configuration tools, customer support, as well as future updates that makes this ecosystem even more powerful with time. Let's talk about what happens once you join the Evo family and then we'll have a closer look at these sub products. Let me tell you again, this is not a combined HDD that you just plug in and go. Frankly, the setup process to make this thing even work is a very complicated for someone who knows nothing about servers. But it doesn't really matter because of their great dedicated customer support team. They do the whole setup for you via a remote desktop app. Seriously, I doubt that people from the support team even knew that I am making this video and they still provided great communication and made sure that every problem I had was resolved as soon as possible. So once I scheduled a setup with a member of support team, he configured Prodigy so that it suits my needs, helped me to create user accounts and got me up and running with Share Browser app. My go-to media management app is Kino and to be honest, I'm so used to it that it will stay this way. But I need to admit, Share Browser has some really interesting features and applications for editors. It can be accessed not only locally, but also for the web. So potentially you can add tags, comments, etc. wherever you are. There is also a great feature of automatic tagging based on computer image recognition. To use it, you have to have an Amazon AWS account 
and since Evo uploads proxies to Amazon to enable its recognition tool to work, you'll be charged by Amazon based on how much data will be processed. But because they are sending proxies, it will be quite inexpensive. Anyway, imagine how you could add keywords to hundreds of hours of footage in an automated way. Objects and activities in the scenes are automatically identified and are easily searchable by anyone with access to the share browser database. Amazing feature. And as expected, filtering features utilize not only tags, but also comments and metadata. So things like name, codec, frame rate, modified date, resolution, and so on. We can even add custom metadata fields. They can be both text type and list type, which can include multiple choice lists. Very cool way of adding categorization to your projects and footage. It's extremely easy to search for clips that are tagged with the same keyword in the web app. You just click twice on any keyword and it creates a search query. On the local app, you can use the copy, paste and verify feature. Just select source files or folders and a destination volume and the copy with verification will run. We also have lots of exporting options in the local app, like exporting metadata to XML files and sending locked footage to your NLE, whether it's Premiere Pro, Resolve, Final Cut Pro or Avid. There is also Premiere Pro panel, which opens the web app within Premiere Pro, so we can search, preview and import assets without ever leaving Premiere. Obviously, all tags and comments come along into a project file to reference them throughout the edit. Both the local and the web version of Share Browser let us create bins that basically are virtual folders and another way we can store and organize files. Bins can be private for a given user or shared with other collaborators. Talking about Premiere Pro, Evo is optimized to work seamlessly with Productions feature. If you're not familiar with Productions, check out my video overview of that new feature. Productions enable multiple editors to work within the same project across shared storage. Project locking is enabled by default and it prevents any conflicts between the timelines. If you ever tried using Dropbox or another cloud solution to share a project, let me tell you that it's not the same. On Dropbox, you don't have real-time project locking. Sure, you can enable it, but there is a few minutes window where you can override someone else's work. And the behavior of the Dropbox synchronization cannot be fully predicted. So if there is anything else synchronizing at the moment, it can be a few hours before a project can be locked or unlocked for your collaborator. Evo, on the other hand, manages project locking in real time. There is no way you can override, you can have a conflict with another editor. I mean, you could have a conflict, but I'm talking about a different kind of conflict. You know what I mean. <laughs> Timeline conflict, like not the real like, okay, let's cut it off. But that's actually not the only advantage of using Evo with productions. Having a shared location for footage, autosaves and preview files makes editing smoother and better. You also don't have to worry about relinking files or duplicated assets. Just note that media cache files and media cache database location is still recommended to be kept locally on a separate fast SSD. Yep, Adobe doesn't recommend putting media cache on shared storage. You can technically do it and theoretically it would improve scrubbing experience even more, but I would go with Adobe's recommendation. We don't want to troubleshoot, do we? If you're using a different NLE, Evo also works great with Avi because it has bin and project sharing, Final Cut Pro 10 because you can share libraries and get most out of Final Cut Pro 10's powerful metadata features. And it's also great for Resolve editors because they can host the Resolve database on Evo. Another component of the Evo ecosystem is the Slingshot API. Thanks to it, we can set watch folders on Evo and perform actions on files. You can set how frequently an automation should run and at what time of the day. The operations don't require any workstation to be turned on because all computing is done internally. You can specify actions around copy, move, delete, transcode and email operations. I already mentioned one of the examples of using Slingshot, which is an automated proxy generation. For my purposes, I run it once a day for newly added assets at midnight. Another example would be to run a backup copy to an external location or even to Dropbox or FTP address. In other words, there is a lot of possibilities. The next component of Evo ecosystem is Nomad, a tool that makes remote editing easier than ever. Nomad repurposes existing shared browser preview files into proxy files. They take very little space on your computer and take less time to copy than your original media. So we can edit with these proxy files and once you're done, you can conform the project, use the source files for rendering. To use Nomad, you simply install it on your computer, 
select the source media folder on your Evo, then you select a destination folder on your computer to download proxies or original media in case proxies aren't available. And you also need to answer a few prompt questions that Nomad will ask. Even more, if you give it a Premiere Pro project in step 2, that is as the source, it will read the project file and copy to your computer all available proxies for every asset used in that project. To use Nomad from your remote location, you need to connect to any workstation that is physically connected to Evo. There are two ways to do it, with a VPN or with a TeamViewer app. With VPN, your remote computer acts as if it's connected to Evo itself. So it's a more convenient solution, but with a more complicated setup for a regular user. There is a tool called the SNS VPN that the company offers, but it's an additional subscription-based payment that also includes 10 terabytes of data transfer. But the VPN isn't required for Nomad. You can also use any screen sharing software. The most popular one is TeamViewer and that's what I used for testing purposes. Basically, you run Nomad on a computer that has connection to Evo and once you package up all the assets, you can transfer them to your remote workstation. To learn more about Evo and what it can do for your filmmaking business, visit the links in the description. And to learn more about productions in Premiere Pro, watch the playlist I've put together. Using the two together gets most out of your shared storage server. Until the next time, shoot and edit like there is no tomorrow.